Hey everyone, welcome to Taste Different Gaming Appetizers. And what are we talking about this time? Microsoft. Activision boosts Microsoft's Q3 gaming business, but Xbox sales collapse continues. So Microsoft has reported the results of their Q3 2024, which ran from the beginning of January to the end of March of this year. And it throws in a very stark relief, uh, narr uh, two narratives unfolding for the Xbox. On one hand, Microsoft's gaming revenue is up slightly overall following the purchase of Activision Blizzard. But the rest of the Xbox business has continued to suffer with console sales down badly year over year. Overall, Microsoft's gaming revenues increased 51% compared to Q3 of 2023, but 55% of that increase comes from Activision Blizzard. In other words, gaming would actually be down 4% without the Call of Duty revenue now pouring into uh, Xbox along with you know everything else Activision Blizzard has. Um, and services revenue was up 62%, with 61 of those points coming from Activision. Meanwhile, sales of the Xbox Series X and S went down 31% year-on-year, with Microsoft expecting further declines next quarter. It should be noted that Xbox sales have been sliding for some time now. In fact, they dropped 30% in quarter three of last year, too. Uh, you, you have to go back to early to mid-2022 to really see any significant growth in Xbox sales as far as the console goes. This would seem to be consistent with recent reports from retailers that Xbox sales are flatlining to the point where some publishers are questioning the work and expense required to port games to the Xbox Series X and S. During Microsoft's Q3 earnings call, CEO Satya, Satya Nadella, hopefully I didn't butcher the name, uh, certainly seemed to be committed to expanding onto new platforms, boasting about publishing seven of the top 25 games on PlayStation this month and further stating they'll meet players where they are. So basically, yeah, I mean, we've talked about this before. Microsoft, I mean, the, the biggest problem, the biggest problem I see for Microsoft is they don't, again, it's, it's been the same issue for them. They don't have anything, right? Uh, and, and what I mean by that is there's a lot of third-party stuff on, on Xbox, um, but first-party games are very slow to come out and and uh, and whether that's first party games or just exclusivity rights you know the thing about playstation is even though we're not getting uh first party titles for the rest of this year i think we talked about that earlier uh they are getting exclusive games such as uh stellar blade as an example is a game that's exclusive to playstation right um along with, you know, whatever else that PlayStation is coming out. And, and Microsoft and, and Helldivers has really helped them, you know. Even though we, we would hope Helldivers at some point goes on to the Xbox, and it's not exclusive to the PlayStation, it is also on PC, but that has definitely helped uh, PlayStation keep its momentum, right, as, as well as a lot of other things. But, and that's, I think, it's really hurt Microsoft, um, especially with Game Pass 2. Game Pass has been, I don't know, I don't know about you, Pat, but lately Game Pass hasn't really come out with a, a lot of games that I've been really interested in playing on Game Pass, uh, unfortunately, here lately, in the last few months or so. Uh, except for just recently, Manor Lords came to uh, Game Pass on PC, which I really want to I really want to check out. So I am excited for that. And, and like I said, there are some games that have sprinkled in here and there, but I think right now it's just Xbox is kind of in a slump at the moment. I think Sinua Saga 2 will definitely help them. I think if they announce like a, a new Gears of War, because uh, there's been rumors of Gears of War 6 possibly be showing off this June when they have their uh, E3, you know, but it's not E3, but whatever, the Summer Game Fest or whatever the hell they're doing. Um, and so they just need those heavy hitters, right? They just need those big games to come out there, especially when they've had some big games that have kind of floundered for them, being... Um, Starfield didn't do so great for uh, Xbox. Redfall definitely did not help them. Uh, 
<laughs> and I, I can't think I can't remember if there was another game that was exclusive to Xbox that just came out to to, de- to the Xbox only that didn't do so hot either. Um, I'm trying to think there is, but I just can't think of what it is. But yeah, I, I think that's just not helping in the long run, right? I think the console is a great console. It's a great device. Um, it just doesn't have anything other than third party offerings, right? right now and i think that's just not helping them i think when they get more of that first party offering but i think also with people seeing them expand into other platforms like putting games out on playstation they only put four games but if we see that increase in the future which i assume we will maybe with select titles to start off with then that's good that might cause people to go well why do i need to get an xbox as far as the hardware goes right um, so I don't know. I, I still think they will make another Xbox, but I wonder how the next Xbox will be, right? If it's going to be, uh, more of a, a, uh, uh, in a sense of like, just like a, a, a device, like a PC where it can play anything type of thing. Right. Um, now what, you know, more than likely Sony won't put their crap on there, but you know, they, they, they basically just come out with another multi-platform box because that's what it almost feels like with xbox because of just how long it's taken to bring out exclusive titles onto the onto the uh, device and of course activision blizzard's going to help them with the revenue sales and that's basically what they've done to boost their sales is buy a bunch of studios and (laughs) you know throw their games out everywhere so i don't know what do you think about all this pat i think it's much to do about nothing and the reason I say that is because every game company out there is losing money right now. Microsoft's not immune to it. Sony's not immune to it. Nobody's immune to it. I, I think this is a lot of much ado about nothing. Um, because if you would have kept Activision and Microsoft separate, they both would have had losing numbers, right? That's just the way it is. Because they both were losing revenue. Because game o- gaming overall is in a slump. And it's in a slump because it's self-writing market. You know, it's self-writing from all the COVID and all this stuff. And, you know, games have been living high on the hog for the last two or three years. And starting in 2023, everything has been self-writing and correcting. Um, There's a lot of things to think about, especially right now. Like, we have heard nothing but mid-gen bump, mid-gen bump, supposed to be the end of this year. We've heard nothing but that for the last year. So... If you are contemplating buying a console, why in the hell would you buy one now rather than unless you just can't wait, waiting for the mid-gen bump to see what's kind of happened to prices? I think anybody that's got half a brain is probably doing that on both the Sony and the Xbox side. They're going, mid-gens are supposed to be out this holiday season and the year's almost half over. So why don't I just wait? If I've waited this long and don't have one, I'm going to wait to the mid-gen because that either means that mid-gen is going to be the same price as the drop rate for the PS5 and the Xbox One X, or it's going to be slightly more. But I think what most people are are banking on is that mid-gen is going to come out at the same cost as the One and the PS5 did, and then the PS5 and the Xbox One X will come down in price. Their their new price will be $100 or $150 or $200 cheaper, or something something like that, because they always are. And that's what people are probably banking on right now. So, you know, new console sales, whatever. Games, (laughs) Microsoft has always done this and they will continue to do this. They buy game studios and they put them out on everything because Microsoft's all about the money. (laughs) However they can make more money is they're going to do it. And if that means that they buy a game company and the majority of the games that company puts out goes on everything and only a certain what they consider console decision changer games will come out on just their console because they've done it forever. Every time they buy a brand, they may have a few games that come out that are exclusive for their console, but then the rest of them are just everything because Microsoft follows the money. And the money says, I just spent billions of dollars. I need to make sure that these games go out everywhere so I can recoup my billions of dollars and make billions more. Um, you know, so everybody, everybody in the gaming industry is losing money. Look at Embracer Group. That group is like falling apart. <laughs> Literally. They're going to be three different game companies. So, um, you know, that stuff I'm not worried about. And it doesn't seem like Microsoft is neither. Um, You know, so 
I think it's I think it's a much ado about nothing because it's just the gaming industry. I don't think we're going to get back into seeing gaming start making an uphill slump until sometime mid 2025. You know, what? Once the mid gens come out and we start getting a little bit more of a steady beat of games that are taking advantage of that mid gen, you'll see some more mid gen console purchases and things like that. Um, but overall, I don't think it's I it ain't something I'm worried about. And like I said, uh, I don't think much people on the Microsoft front, people that are buying into stock or whatever Microsoft, because since the earnings call, they're they're up to like four hundred and six. So. And when was their earnings call? I forgot when their earnings call was in the week. I was trying to see where they started at. Um, Cause I think they uh, had like, when was, what, when, when, when was, was the earnings call? Yeah. Oh, I mean, I would assume here pretty, I mean, cause their third quarter ended in March, the end of March. So right. sometime in April, I would say it's probably wasn't that too far or too long ago. Right, yeah. Maybe so ago, maybe. what does it say? Uh, yeah, I can't. If, yeah, I can't even see what the date is. So, uh, so they report on the twenty fifth, which was a day ago. So they had a slight slump that morning, where they start the morning at four oh eight nine, and they're you know they lost some, but they're back up to four oh six. So most people don't give a rat. So they're like, eh. A little bit of not not what we thought, but that's everybody in the gaming industry, and they're already almost back to their their pre market uh, closing of four oh nine. You know, so they're almost right back there. So obviously the markets didn't shift that much, which you know that says most of the things to me. But like I said, it's one of those things to me. It's like no duh, everybody in the gaming industry is hurting. Every developer, every publisher, everybody out there is tightening the belt. Um. I mean, Microsoft already signaled that by laying off a bunch of people, uh, you know, so everybody has everybody in the gaming industry has woes right now. Um, and trying to spin this as like anything other than normalcy in the gaming market is just it's trying to create something out of nothing, in my opinion. Um, uh, yeah, of course, Microsoft would have been in a uh, gaming would have been in a slump for revenue. Everybody has been. So, you know, <sighs> try to find a gaming company that hasn't laid anybody off in 2023 or 2024 is more of a more of a more of a great find than than this news. So, you know, probably those Put single studio crossword puzzle. Yeah. <laughs> find. Find this in the word find. Which company has not laid off employees and which gaming company has not laid off employees in 2023 or 2024? That'd be a much harder needle to find in that haystack. So I think it's like I said, I think it's it's whoopee, whatever. Uh, give it the next couple of years and we'll see where it goes. And we all know that the Sony dominates the console market. There's there's no no ifs, ands, or buts about this. But if anybody is hoping for the device of my demise of Microsoft, you're basically kicking yourself in your own nuts because if Sony is the only existing company gaming company out there in the end, you lose, <laughs> they win. Everybody else loses because competition breeds every advancement out there without competition. Sony can decide to say, we want hundred dollar games and you have nothing to do, but pay it if you want to play it because they have nobody there holding them back. If Microsoft goes away from the gaming console and nobody's there to replace them, that $500 console is gone. It's $700 console, $800 console. Sony's going to be like, why the hell are we restricting this down so low? We've got no competition. No competition is bad for any industry and especially gaming. So if you're hoping for the demise of one or the other, you're an idiot. And you, if that happens, you reap what you sow when you can no longer afford to play games. You got nobody to blame but yourself for hoping that one of them fails. I need we need healthy, healthy competition in the gaming industry. If we could get a third in that pool, it would be even better. So Nintendo needs to wake up, make their new gen next gen console. Stop, you know, keep your keep your switch because it does well, but come back in with this next gen console, man. You guys gotta get back in there. Or Sega or somebody needs to jump back in the pool. But this only having two like next gen consoles is just for the birds. We need another one to help keep these guys in line. For the birds. Yep. 
Yeah, I mean, you're probably right. It probably is just uh, making a uh, mountain out of a molehill type of thing. Um, I just hope Microsoft does. I just, you know, I I just want to see that first party lineup really be strong from them. Uh, That's all I want, really. I hope they announce a Gears of War 6. (laughs) Maybe that's what it is. Maybe I'm just really hoping for a Gears of War 6. And it has, you know, because when we all played the last one, five all together, that was super fun. Like I had a really fun time. That game was really good. I even, we even played the DLC, all of us. I mean, that's, (laughs) that game was a lot of fun. It was really fun to play together. So like, I just hope they come out with a six and saying with Saga looks really good. You know, I just hope they get those. They have a lot of good stuff in the pipeline. I just want to see it come out. You know, maybe I'm just getting too anxious. Uh, and I'm ready to see some of that stuff come to fruition because it's been so long, it seems, right? Since we've seen some of it. But Saiyan with Saga has come out, uh, what, next month, I think, in May? So that one looks really good. Really excited to play that one. But yeah, I mean, you're right. They are looking for the money and you've, you know, you can only stay in one location for so long and you have to start publishing elsewhere um, because otherwise you're going to just contain yourself into one space right and that's why they come out on xbox and pc right which has probably helped them quite a bit yeah why would you limit your revenue if you can make millions of dollars more by just putting it out on something else why would you not like i don't care if you can make 10 million dollars more more or 5 million more only that's all you can make that's all i'm talking like that's all but you know a game makes 100 million dollars on a console and we're talking profit and why not put it out on something else to get another 10 million or 5 million? What, what are you going to get? What are you not going to gain from that? In my opinion. Um, you know, I think uh, Sony's strategy right now is that they are cornering their, they're, they're preparing for their storefront market. And that's what they're trying to do because once the brick and mortar sales of games is gone, the only place to buy a game on PlayStation is the PlayStation store no place else after that so every game that they sell that's not their own they make 30 percent or whatever the console market is i mean i know it's 30 percent on like steam and stuff like that i'd imagine it's probably something comparable on the 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 sony store It, it may not be that much but anyway they make money by others games like stuff they don't publish stuff they don't develop if you buy on their storefront, they automatically get a chunk for free. They did nothing but list it for them. So they're preparing for that. And they are ready for that because that's an increased revenue for them. It's slowly swinging that way, but a good chunk of people still buy physical. I still buy physical for PlayStation. Um, so once that goes away, you have to start paying Sony that fee that, you know, that percentage of whatever it costs that developer or publisher to list it on their store. You know, so it's usually a percentage of every sale. So at that point, they're just waiting for that because then they make money on every game that comes onto their console. Every game. If they developed it and published it, they make all the revenue from it. If they didn't develop it or publish it and it's on their storefront, they make money every time somebody buys one. So for them, it's a no brainer to try to keep things small because they have the largest market share of consoles out there. If Microsoft eats into that and they slowly start losing, you know, start losing their footprint, stop losing, start losing their footprint. That's less money that they have to make after they can, you know, once they get this good chunk of revenue of all these um, digital players and digital downloads. So, I mean, it's how Steam, who <laughs> Valve ha- makes money nowadays because Valve doesn't make games anymore. <laughs> they very rarely, if ever, put out a game anymore. So their whole their whole thing of come to market is we're going to sell other people's crap and make money off of it. And that's what Sony's all about. Sony makes good first party games and they make a lot of money off of it. But I guarantee you the digital storefront makes them more than what their probably own independent studio make their internal studios because of all this. And when digital comes, it's only digital. They make money on every title. I don't think people understand this that with them holding the monopoly of the only way to get a digital game on the PlayStation, they make money on every digital game sold. 
And then when no physical, they make money on every game sold. And on games that aren't theirs, they make money whether the publishers and the developers make money because they get first cut, first dollar. So <laughs> Microsoft is all about just whoring it out because they don't have that same type of ecosystem. Microsoft Store makes money, but I can buy a digital code from somewhere else and inject it into the Microsoft Store. I can buy a gift card and inject it into the Microsoft Store. You know, whereas Sony, you can't do that crap. So unless you buy it directly from Sony. All right. That's true. So we'll have to see what the future holds for these kind of all these console manufacturers. And I'm really interested to see what these mid gen bumps are, as well as what the next gen consoles are and how they're going to how this industry is going to uh you know grow in the future. Um it'll be really interesting to see what direction things take. But you got anything else you want to say about this? All right. Well, let us know down in the comments below. What do you think? What do you think about the industry? Would you like to see another uh, manufacturer, console manufacturer, come into the play? Maybe Sega comes back with the Dreamcast 2 or, I don't know, some other Sanyo party station comes out? Who knows? You know, let us know down in the comments below. Other than that, thanks for watching, everybody. Make sure to like the video. Make sure to subscribe if you're not already. Help us out. Do us a favor. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell notifications to stay up to date with new videos that we do all the time. And we will see you next time. Thank you.